everyone, welcome to Life Edge. This is our pre-show. Uh, sorry for the delay. We've been having some minor Skype issues. <laughs> What's new? It's Skype. And um, I think we're okay. I know our bandwidth is good here, but something must have been going on. All right, so let's see. We're going to... Everybody ready? Let me switch over here. Um, we have yeah, with us uh, Shipeng Fu. She is joining us. She's with Knowledgeet. I like the name. That's a cool name. And um, <coughs> Susan Nash, Dr. Susan, she is with us in the other corner. So we are about ready to go. Susan, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Shipeng, are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start the show uh, on this shot. So we'll start here. We will introduce the show. We'll run an introduction. And then we will introduce you. Sure. All right. So, Susan, shall we get going? Yes. Okay. We are going to start the show recording in three, two, and one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Life Edge. Because life not lived on the edge is wasting space. I'm joined today by Dr. Susan Nash. Hi, Susan. How are you? Hello, Rick. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm planning to go to Chihuahua races after we finish. Chihuahua races? They must be short, <laughs> short Tulsa, laps, huh? Here in Tulsa, we're having Chihuahua races. Chihuahua races. Okay. Those would be very <laughs> short racetracks, aren't they? But I won't. <laughs> anyway. Susan. We are ready to go. Here we go. And we are back. Susan, we've got a great guest today. Would you like to introduce her? We do. We have a fantastic guest, Dr. Shi Peng Fu, and she is the founder of Knowledgeet. It is a company that is focusing on micro learning. So, um, Shi Peng, it's great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm really happy to be here uh, to be on the show. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Shiping Fu. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of KnowledgeEd. Uh, so we provide, KnowledgeEd provides bite-sized knowledge uh, taught online by experts in petroleum industry. It's really great, Shiping, and I'd like you to maybe describe to our audience what exactly you mean by bite-sized learning. Um, that says learning. So, uh, so I guess uh, I can. I have a story for it. I can start from the beginning. Why we do this and uh, why it's by size. Uh, how about that? That's perfect. Yeah. So, uh, so I can introduce myself a little bit. Uh, so, uh, I am a petroleum engineer. Uh, I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin uh, with a PhD in 2008. Uh, subsequently, I joined the Shell Oil in Houston. And I worked there as a reserve engineer, as a petroleum engineer for a few years. Then uh, I moved to the Bay Area and joined an uh, energy startup company called C12 Energy. Then in 2014, I found a knowledge yet. So, uh, so I said I have a story for why we do this. Why? So, uh, in, a few years ago, I want to take a, a class in CO two injection for my for my job. Uh, so I did some search and uh, I found a class called the Enhanced Oil Recovery, uh, which will cover uh, a portion of uh, CO two injection. But that class is five days long and it's in Canada. Uh, so I really have a dilemma because I really want 
attend that class. I need that content for my job. Uh, but I have to leave my seat for five days. And uh, uh, I was in the middle of a project. And it's actually pretty expensive. And also the contents I'm interested in will be covered in one afternoon. So that's a problem for me. Um, so that's, uh, th but at the same time, yeah, so this is uh, not a jet. So at the same time, I was taking some online courses from Coursera and also from other universities. And I felt is, uh, I actually learned a lot. It's a great format and great style. So that's why I think, why don't we do this in our industry, in petroleum industry? And uh, as we know, as Susan, uh, Susan also knows, our, the oil industry is highly technical driven and highly experience driven and also multidisciplinary. No matter what kind of degree you have uh, from school, no matter how much, I mean, how much education you have uh, from school, and you always have to learn uh, uh, on your job. So, uh, so that's why they really need a, a, a platform for, for sharing knowledge and the pass on knowledge. So, there's a, so that's, I see the need and the market for this. And that's why I acknowledge it. And also for, for online learning. Um, and uh, I think we, we, all, we all have the experience to uh, listen to a webinar for an hour. And we know uh, it's just very challenging for us to stay focused for, for, for watching a video. So, so that's, that's, that's why um, uh, we want to buy size. And actually before uh, we founded a company, um, I did a lot of research and I talked to different people. I did a lot of research. Um, on the online learning. Um, although the, the massive open course is kind of new things uh, in the few, uh, a few years ago, but there are some research published already. And we found a paper, a published paper. They start, this paper started video production and uh, students for performance and how they related together. So there are three uh, important aspects uh, for, for good and engaging videos. The first thing is actually the length of the uh, video. So they found out, they started thousands of the videos and also the, the student's performance, and they found out if the video is between six to nine minutes, so the student's performance, the, uh, the engaging is the optimal. So, I mean, that's why that size. I find that to be really interesting. Both Rick and I have been involved in e-learning for many years. And I remember in the late 90s, the goal was to have um, a lot of video learning and in short snippet learning. But at that point, it wasn't really as feasible as it is now for a number of technical reasons. And it was fascinating that the research always demonstrated that the shorter and more engaging types of, of interactions were better. But it, it really wasn't, it, it hasn't really been implemented as much as it should be. Rick, what are your thoughts? Uh, E-learning is an interesting world. I mean, we've been involved in e-learning officially since 1995, and before that, unofficially, since about the mid-70s. <laughs> so we've... I have a long background with e-learning. And, and Susan's right. You couldn't do video in the old days. Now you can. For at least for the last probably seven or eight years, we can. And I think video is a great platform for, for training. And I love your idea of doing short videos, catching the attention span, catching the way adults learn versus giving people an hour or two of training. And it's overloaded. It's too much at one time, especially people who work because exactly. they don't have the time to just focus for two hours. They're kind of rushing back to get to whatever they're doing. What, what made you get into e-learning originally? Uh, for me? Yes. Uh, um, so that's uh, so the story I, I told, right? So, mm -hmm. it's, I, so it's because I was the, the end user 
of learning and uh, so that's from my own experience and my own problem and I see there is a need and a market for this uh, uh, that's that's why I mean I and I jump into this mm-hmm. uh, Oh, and also the other reason for bite size for professionals, like you said, for prof- especially for professionals, we the learning is not from A to Z because we are not like a blank paper. Uh, we already have a lot of prior knowledge, mm-hmm. and the, we what a professional <coughs> want is we just want to fill the holes, right? We, we, we already have some backgrounds, but there's something, uh, just some parts are missing. And we don't want to start from A to Z again. I just want to, maybe I want to start from C, and I want to pick whatever uh, I want, and go where, go whatever I want, right? So I can go backwards, I can go forward. So that's also bite size can enable us. Yeah. So do One you of the see things so- I really like about Knowledge at Platform is that it incorporates universal design and that you have a transcript for the scripts of, of all of the videos and also you have PowerPoints that have um, a lot of, of interaction. And then also what I like about it is control that by clicking on word in the script, it goes to the place in video. And that to me is, is kind of amazing in terms of being able to pinpoint where you need to start, stop, and, and also reinforce knowledge. Yeah, so yeah, so as you, you and Rick said before, so e-learning has started like uh, many years ago but right now with the deep i mean the progress of technology so which i mean uh enable us to do a lot of advanced features can help user to further engage user so the transcripts like what you mentioned i think for our community is because it's highly technical and a highly, uh, our audience is very global, it's very international. So the transcripts is, uh, is necessary for us to learn the technical contents. Um, um, and for in our platform, so you, can, you, you have the uh, freedom to choose close the caption. So you can, uh, you can, so you can watch transcripts, you, you watch, watch video and with ca- captions. Uh, and also you have transcripts displayed on the right hand side and the, right, the transcripts will be highlighted. And uh, one of the other cool things, yeah, actually you can do control F to search hmm. uh, the transcripts, then it will directly go jump to, uh, to the video, to that point. So, uh, because you know, for videos sometimes it's hard to go to the point you want, right? So if you, 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 you move the sliders, it's, it's hard to find. But, because of transcripts, and uh, you can be, if you are able to search, so then can directly go to that portion of the video. So that's another cool thing uh, uh, I want to mention. That's actually a very cool feature of using a transcript to immediately point back to the video. I haven't seen that done yet, so that's actually pretty cool. That's what I thought too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, sorry, Rick, what, what, what were you saying? You want to say something? I was just saying that that's a, that's a really nice feature. Um, yeah. in, in all the years I've worked with video, I haven't seen that particular one done. I've seen transcripts, but they don't tie back to the video. So that's a, that's a nice feature. Yeah. And I didn't realize that you could do the um, control F and actually search for the words. That is really perfect. Yeah, you're, yes, you can, Susan. <laughs> well, the other thing I like about it is that it, with a mix and match approach, people can take um, and assemble their own kind of mini courses and create little packages, and I like that too. Now, in your, in your uh, platform, Shipang, do you create all the courses, or do other people create them and load them on your system? 
That's a great question. So we are very fortunate uh, to have great instructors uh, for knowledge ed. So we have lead experts and the leaders uh, in, uh, in our industry to, to teach and share knowledge. So we have uh, uh, SPE distinguished lectures and we have subject matter experts retire from Shell Oil Company. We okay. have experts retire from Chevron. We have professors from Stanford, from Berkeley, and we have APG. So we just <laughs> partner with APG. So Susan knows all, all of it. So uh, I think uh, 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 I think the e-learning, uh, online learning. So for all of this, features are nice. But the most important thing I think is is the content, the quality mm -hmm. of the content itself. So mm -hmm. I'm actually really proud that we have uh, so many great experts and instructors on board and uh, to teach. And all these experts, not only they're experts, and they're also passionate to share. So they love to teach. So that's uh, that's uh, another thing for 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 all the courses at Knowledge Ed. Well, one thing, Susan, I would say, at least from, from my experience with it, and this is kind of relating to Rick's question, it was pretty easy to do. <laughs> when I, the, on the ones where I contributed, I just had a PowerPoint, and I, well, there were two different things. One was a, a, a presentation I made at Santa Fe at the um, local society about the future of of unconventionals and shales and, and what to do and how to survive and that was recorded the, then the second approach was just to do uh, a powerpoint and then record the audio for each slide individually then I just shared them with Chi Bang and then her team did all the processing when I identified the learning objectives and the review questions, things like that, so put those things in there. But it was effortless for me because I didn't have to go through and create my own transcript or script, and I didn't have to uh, um, put all the different knowledge at elements where she has beautiful little automations and animations that she incorporates in. Yeah, so, yeah, that's also a great point. Uh, so we, because for the instructors, the teachers, we don't want them to spend a lot of time to, to, uh, to beautify the slides and to do graphic design or something like that. Uh, we want them to spend their time just on the focus on the content itself. So the rest of the anything else, we, I mean, knowledge it, produce everything. So we, have, so as Susan said, uh, there's one format, for example, uh, we do uh, just a classroom recording, even just a classroom recording, and uh, we have the audio from the classroom, and we have PowerPoint slides, and we will combine them everything together, and we produce nice uh, videos, highly dynamic videos, and our, I mean, our videos are highly dynamic and engaging. Because you cannot just show a video with uh, a, a slides, bullet points. Uh, we want to be engaging. Because we, what we want to do is to help users, to help people to learn the contents. So we do everything to, to engage users to, to follow the contents. Uh, so for example, we, like for, with APG, uh, we produce from AAPG's webinar, so webinar recording um, with a steel of PDF slides and uh, uh, MP3 uh, audio, and uh, we produce highly dynamic um, video out of it. Um, the other example is we uh, just delivered one project with Shell Oil Company. We work with their training department. Uh, what we do is from their classroom recording. So we record a five-day classroom, uh, 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 five-day training class, and uh, we have uh, we have these raw recordings 
the, the audio and the, the video audio and the slides and I will reproduce by size uh, uh, videos, video lectures for them. That's great. Uh, so it makes it very sense. dynamic. You always have updated content. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Sounds like you're, you're enjoying what you're doing. Yes, I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, it is interesting, though, because as an engineer, you're leveraging your knowledge of engineering. Did you do training before this at all? Uh, I did not do training. Uh, uh, yes. I guess I, I, I yeah as an engineer yes I actually uh, one time I went to Nigeria for my job uh, as when I worked for Shell and because we developed some tools and we want to deploy it to this to the uh, to the field <coughs> so I went to. Uh, went to the went to the field and uh, um, train engineers. Um, I and also I was a TA when I did my uh, PhD. So um, so I, I think I enjoy this and uh, I guess uh, I can leverage my um, engineering background uh, because I'm in the field. So I have the domain knowledge. Uh, so I can help design the videos and also while because I'm in the Silicon Valley and in the Bay Area mm -hmm. so I have so many access to great people and to great technology so we can make this together we can combine this together the domain knowledge and the technology together uh, so I guess that's one of the uniqueness of and I can see a lot of potential for growth because just speaking from a, an instructional design perspective and also sort of building an entire curriculum with different types of, of projects in the future, there's a lot of potential and the fact that you're willing to work with, with people that have like the cognitive psychology background and, and instructional design and instructional technology expertise really kind of makes it come together in a powerful combination, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the, uh, the education technology is uh, developing a lot recently. So we can actually use a lot of uh, the techniques uh, to put this back to e-learning. So that's why e-learning is, is, I think, it's gained popularity again. Uh, because we have access to the, the latest technology, we can do a lot of analytics to, to users, to how they perform, and uh, then we can further improve the products. Right, and then also just incorporate instructional design principles that, that really relate to how people learn, how people know. I mean, really, can, how have you seen things change over the years? I'm sorry, how do I see what? How have you seen things change in terms of instructional design and, and the use of video over the years? Now, I, I still haven't seen that much video used, and, and instructional design hasn't kept up with the technology that much. There are exceptions. And, and, and I think Xipeng is an exception because being newer to the field, you add new blood to the field, which is important. Um, because too many people stay in one spot and they never grow, they never change. So it's good to have people who come into the field with a different attitude, different, less restrictions, if you will. And as a result, that makes for more innovation. I totally agree with that, because what I see in the last, say, say six or seven years, is that the, the learning management system, whether it's... Um, something like Blackboard or D2L, there's been kind of a, 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 a rigid adherence to the structure, and it's, it's kept people making a kind of cookie-cutter, cookie uh, fat, factory-sort-of-generated experience, which is sort of inimical to learning. And it's, it's exciting to me to see the first point of the out, like right? somebody who's, who's like fresh and, and not bound by, oh, we have to do it this way. 
Well, also it sounds like what what you're focusing on, Shipeng, is the content, content that's going, going to make petroleum engineers or engineers in general better at what they do, not so much concerned about checkoffs. Okay, did you check the compliance course? Check. Did you do this? Check. Did you go through HR training? Check. Which is not training. That's just checking off so that lawyers can't sue you. That's a very different approach. And, and most companies are focused on checkoff training, check, 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 versus are my people learning anymore? Are they becoming more productive? Are we growing? Are we being able to manage, analyze, and use that knowledge that they're gaining from training? And that's what we're not seeing that much of in the industry. There's too much check, 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 check. Yeah. I agree. That's what I liked about Xi Ping's comment about prior knowledge and experience. Yeah. And, uh, and Xi Ping, when, um, you, what are your plans for the future? Uh, my plans for the future? That's a great question. Uh, I think uh, knowledge at one day will become a tool uh, for every professional. Uh, so uh, maybe on their computer, so why, uh, once they, uh, they need something and uh, for their job, they want to learn some uh, concept of terms and they can just search on our platform and they will get the answer immediately. And uh, hopefully they don't need to wait for a month and uh, buy a ticket to Canada to take a five-day class. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we are uh, constantly developing uh, new courses. Uh, we're adding those to our library, and uh, we actually just launched uh, um, a few days ago, I mean, a week ago, and we already uh, have uh, many subscribers, and uh, uh, it's pretty exciting. Sounds like it. But well, we are almost at the end of our time, and Susan probably wants to ask you an important question. I do. Okay, the name of our program is Life Edge. So we like to ask our guests what it is that you believe has given you an edge in living life. Um, curiosity. I love that answer. So, how no, have you found curiosity driving you forward? Uh, you, uh, I think you want to uh, find out uh, why and uh, find out can you. So, I think that's. Uh, I mean, find out can I do this? So that's uh, that's how this how this drives me, I think, and that's why I'm an engineer, and that's why I I mean, I do my PhD. That's why uh, I found knowledge. It. I think that's yeah, that's curiosity is a, a important thing in my life. That's that's really good. I have a friend who's an engineer in Belgium. And she always says, she's so sad, she just retired several years ago, and she said, she's so sad to see a lot of young people have no curiosity. And without curiosity, there's not much m emotion, there's not much want to do better. So your answer is yeah. great. It's good to hear that, because that, as long as you have curiosity, you'll have a pretty good life. There's always something new. You'll have fun with life. Yeah. And, yes. and that is important. And there's so much to learn. So... Yes, yes. I yeah. like that. Yeah, you once you have curiosity, you always have something new. And yeah, we you people, will always have fun. If you can if you can keep these things in mind, who, what, when, where, why and how, your life will be pretty full. Yeah. Who, what, when, where, so why true. and how. And then that whole idea of just exploring new worlds, breaking new um, like limits for that you set for yourself, things that you never thought for yourself. I just love that. Well, Shipeng, yeah. you may not know this, but Susan is planning on going to Mars one day. 
She wants to go to Mars. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> because that's a comment from my mom about me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's so funny, yeah. And uh, Susan and I, and we just had few com phone conversation a few times, and uh, and I, I really love her. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I just I feel the same way. <laughs> That's good. Well, Shipeng, what is the best way for people to get a hold of you, and or are you giving any talks or webinars or anything else soon? Oh, uh, so you can uh, write email to me. So it's my first name, dot my last name, at knowledge.com. And, uh, and uh, feel free to check out knowledge.com. And uh, you can subscribe the free plan without, uh, without nothing. So it's absolutely free. And also, we have the pro plan. And uh, we, you also have the coupon code for one month's free trial. And uh, the code is on the website. That's great. So exciting. All right. Well, Shipeng, it's been a real pleasure meeting you, and um, I think we'll be in touch again. We have another show that we're going to be starting soon that we'll give you a call on, and that's called eLearn Chat. It's been out for, we, we've been around for about six years with that show, but we stopped it about a year ago, and people want us to bring it back, so we're going to bring it back. So we'll talk to you again on that show. I think it'll be fun. That's how you and I met, Rick. We met through eLearn Chat, yes. And then we killed the show right after that. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you had nothing to do with that. <laughs> and then, but we did start this show, so that was good. <laughs> so anyway, well, Shipping, a real pleasure meeting you, and we wish you great success with your venture, Knowledge Ed. And we will put the website and everything in the show notes, and we'll send you the link as soon as the show is up and ready, which will probably be later tonight or tomorrow morning. Wow, thank you. I'm so excited. That'll be fun. Well, thank you for coming on. And Susan, as always, thank you for being there. We did have a little bit of Skype issues today. You could probably hear it in our audio. Sometimes Skype does that. But things beyond our control. But anyway, have a good one, everyone. If you're watching the live recording on YouTube, you can watch that again if you'd like. Or if you're watching the recorded show, that will be up on vimeo.com slash channels slash life edge. And um, please do subscribe when you go there. We like having our members, and we'll send you emails every time the show is up live. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Shipen. Thank you.